Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another beautiful sunny day in Central Park with me, Desiree. Hello, nice to meet you all. My name is Desiree, and I will be leading the weekly walk today. That is going to be Storybooks in Central Park on October 26, 2022. I hope everybody is doing well. And today, our weekly walk is going to primarily focus on settings and backdrops, places in Central Park that take place also in storybooks. So we're gonna be highlighting a couple of storybooks that use some Central Park places and settings in their stories. And I'm gonna primarily be focusing on children's storybooks. So make sure you sit back, relax, and enjoy our journey through Central Park this week. As always, we have our Zoom setting. As always, we have our Zoom setting. So if you need to turn off or on the transcript, that's gonna be right here at the bottom. We have a live transcript CC, and we also have a Q&A and chat feature. So make sure you tell us where you're coming from and how you're doing today on this beautiful day in Central Park. And with that, we are gonna start our journey. Of course, our mission statement is part of the Central Park Conservancy that is going to be to preserve and celebrate Central Park as a sanctuary from the taste and pressures of city life and enhancing the enjoyment and well-being of all. And Today, our weekly walk is going to start right at East 72nd Street, and we are gonna end around East 64th Street. So we do have a lot of ground to cover. So with that, let's start our journey through Central Park. All right, so we're gonna be starting right here at East 72nd Street, lesser known as the Inventors Gate. We have about 20 named gates in Central Park reflecting the populations that will use it. So we have Adventures Gate, Children's Gate, Boys Gate, Girls Gate, Women's Gate, and et cetera. And we are just going to continue along the path, entering on this beautiful day in Central Park, right in East 72nd Street. And with that, we are already at our first destination, our first setting. And that is going to be the Conservatory Water, right next to Curbs Bolt House. Conservatory Water was planned to have a conservatory, which actually never came to fruition, but the name Conservatory Water stuck, which is why we have it today. Essentially, it has been a long-standing tradition to use conservatory water for model boat races or model yacht races, and you'll see the Central Park's Model Yacht Club start in 1916 and still do boating events to this day. So the spears that you are actually seeing in the water are to help with that model boat course. And that brings us to our first book of the day, which is going to be Stuart Little by E.B. White. So Stuart Little is a mouse that actually lives in New York City. And there is a pivotal scene in the novel where Stuart Little also participates in his own boat race right on conservatory water. So that is gonna be our first book reference of today. Um, but just a shout out, as well as the as well as the scene in the book, there's also a scene in the Stuart Little movie that also takes place right on Conservatory Water. Very fun references for you today. And with that, we are going to continue on as our next stop is not too far at all, as we can see the next destination in our sights. And that, of course, is going to be the Margarita Delacorte Memorial. So the Mar the Margarita Delacorte Memorial is better known as the Alice in Wonderland statue, which was donated by the notable philanthropist who has made many contributions to Central Park, and that's going to be George Delacorte. So George Delacorte would dedicate this memorial to his wife, Margarita Delacorte, who would often be found reading the Lewis Cowell version of Alice in Wonderland. And as you can see, this statue also doubles as a jungle gym, a climbable structure, which many children 
to this day, of course, enjoy climbing and playing all around. Both children and kids at heart can play on this memorial structure. It's very interesting and unique indeed. And of course, we have a little plaque that talks a little bit more about this dedication. It says this monument to Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. It was presented to the city of New York by George and Margarita Delaporte Foundation. And that's gonna be on May 7th in 1959. So definitely the next time you are around Conservatory Water, you gotta stop by and see the Margarita Delacorte Memorial. And with that, again, another beautiful and busy day in the park, as we can see, many children enjoying the nice weather that we have, of course. And we actually have the next stop in our sites as well. So this next stop is going to be the Hans Christian Andersen statue. So the Hans Christian Andersen statue was donated by the Danish American Women's Association. And of course, Hans Christian Andersen himself has created many fairy tale classics. I'm not sure if we have any Disney fans in the audience, but this will be the man who is actually responsible for a couple fairy tales that turned into Disney adaptations. So right here, we have the Snow Queen, which would become Frozen, the Ugly Duckling, which Hans Christian Andersen was actually reading, the ugly duckling to the ugly duckling right beside him in this statue, as you can see. And we have the Little Mermaid, which of course turned into the Disney classic, The Little Mermaid. So Hans Christian Andersen is a very notable author and the actual spot of the statue turned into a place for many different children's story times in real life. So that is something very fun. And the entire area is now dedicated to children to play and things like that, very fun. And as you can see in the detail of this statue on the book that Hans Christian Andersen is holding, it is actually the ugly duckling itself. And it has some etchings and some words of the first few pages of the ugly duckling. So I know we haven't traveled too far yet, but we already got a couple book references. I just wanted to point out the detail on this sculpture on the top hat beside him that essentially has the signature of the sculpture themselves. And with that, we are going to continue along exiting Conservatory Water, and we are going to make our way down the lake and past Bethesda Terrace. So we're going to continue up our path. We got to cross the street. Get to the other side. Of course, we're going to look both ways, continuing along our path. As we pass the boathouse, so we're by the path that is closest to the boathouse. And with that, we actually have our next destination or our next setting in Central Park. And of course, it's going to be the lake. So the Central Park Lake is the first naturalistic water body created. And it is also the largest out of our seven naturalistic water bodies. So essentially, as you can see, we have many people who boat on the lake, but also way back in the day, in the park's origins, the lake also used to be used for ice skating. It's very popular for many different attractions and also to see some fall foliages, as we can see some fall colors peeking out. It is also going to be the setting or the backdrop of our next book. And that book is going to be titled A Green Place to Be, The Creation of Central Park. And at the end, I'm going to have a list of some of these books that are here, so don't you worry, we'll get a list to these books. All right, so the page, a little excerpt of the page reads, and this was the first park that the two men made together. After the success of Central Park, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Fox went on to create parks all across America. They gave us forests to get lost in, wild places to wander, quiet green spots in a fast changing world. And who were the parks made for? They were made for you. So that's very fun. And of course, as we can see in our illustration, we have the lake and actually the boat landings that you could still see around the lake to this day. So definitely come out and check out the Central Park Lake the next time we are visiting. We are gonna continue down our path and we're gonna zoom past the oh so busy 
but that's the terrace on this nice, beautiful, and sunny day in the park. We're going to zoom past and just say hello to the Angel of the Waters Fountain, also known as Bethesda. Bethesda Fountain. And of course, we are going to cross the street that is absolutely named Olmsted and Vox Way, which will be the creators and founders of Central Park. That will be Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox, which the book that we just saw actually mentioned. And we are going to continue up the mall, but this seems like a perfect time for a poll. Okay, so for our poll today, we have what media genre do you most relate with Central Park? So we're talking about any type of media. It could be books, TV, movie, and etc. But which genre do you relate mostly with Central Park? We have romance, comedy, action, drama horror, animation, or children's media. And by children's media, I mean things like Sesame Street. So that we are gonna continue along the path of the mall. And let us see what media genre the audience most associates with Central Park. All right, ending the poll. And let's see those results. So we have a very whopping 61% who most relate the media genre of romance with Central Park, with action actually coming second. Very interesting, but I would say that makes a lot of sense as Central Park and a lot of the scenery and backdrops we have seen today slash we're going to see today are actually a very romantic place and make for a very romantic stroll in the park. So definitely make sure next time you stop by you can have a nice romantic stroll all right we're going to continue up the mall got the wall foliage colors coming through nice scenic backdrop for this people and we're going to make our way under widowdale arch to get to our next destination, very notable and very popular. We could already see it in our sights. I'm sure that you all know it, but if you don't, of course, it is going to be the Balto statue, the also oh famous and beloved Balto statue. Of course, this is going to be a statue of the heroic sled dog Balto, a memorial dedicated to him who essentially in 1925, stopped the outbreak of diphtheria. It threatened the town of Nome, Alaska, and the only way to transport the medicine to Nome, Alaska would be with sled dog teams. And although Bolto was the last one to leave, he was the first one to make it to the destination of Nome, Alaska, virtually breaking the outbreak of diphtheria overnight and curing many people as well, which is why we have this beautiful statue dedicated in his memory and it is very beloved as you saw in the picture before with many children who like to climb on it and of course we have some books about balto here we got balto <laughs> the adventures of balto and the bravest dog ever the true story of balto there are many different iterations and many different printings of the story of balto and just to give a bonus reference, there is also, of course, the very popular 90s animated film surrounding Balto as well. So he is very beloved in many different children's media. And that's why, of course, we have a nice memorial dedicated to him today. And on this nice sunny day in Central Park, it seems like Balto has a nice, delicate flower placed in his mouth. and also, if you can see the details on the ears, which seem to be the most popular place where Balto seems to get pet, as statues react to hand oils, which makes them look a little bit discolored. But we can see people really enjoy this statue today and enjoy petting Balto's ears. So the next time you are in Central Park, make sure you give Balto a nice pet yourself. And of course, we have this beautiful plaque 
which also has these nice etchings of the sled dog team right here on top. The plaque just says, dedicated to the indomitable spirit of the sled dog. Very nice detail indeed. That is something very nice and unique about all of our statues in the park. They will have very intricate and detailed plaques. And with that, we're gonna be saying bye to Balto for now. And we're gonna be passing through our last couple stops of the walk, and we're gonna be ending right around East 64th Street. We are going to continue along our path. Seeing our last few sites for today. And I just wanted to have a brief stop and a quick shout out to the Dean Slope. The Dean Slope is actually very close to Balto and you should definitely check it out when you get the chance. Essentially, the Dean Slope was a restoration project done by the Central Park Conservancy in 2017 to feature a meadow of completely native plants. So all the plants that are here in Dean Slope are actually going to be native, which is very integral to many of the wildlife that call our park home today. One of those things are gonna be monarch butterflies. So monarch butterflies depend almost 80% of their diet on milkweed and milkweed has actually been disappearing, which means that the monarch butterfly population has been decreasing. So with the decrease of the monarch butterfly population, meadows like these are very integral and important to continuing the survival of different wildlife species, just like the monarch butterfly. So these restoration efforts are very beautiful and integral to help out those butterflies as well. So we always appreciate your support of the Central Park Conservancy. Whether you're here today or you supported it another day, we always appreciate all of your support. And with that, we're gonna continue on our walk, getting down to our last couple sites. We are entering a little promenade for one of our last spots, the Central Park Zoo. And there's actually a lot to see right around here. So first, we're going to be passing the Kish Children's Zoo, which is essentially more like a petting zoo place, which is gonna feature many different farm animals. And we are going to continue along our walk for today, a beautiful and sunny day in Central Park with many people walking around as well. And we have a site of another book reference. So this is gonna be called the Honey Bear Statue, also known as the Dancing Bear Statue, which has a whole storybook theme. It was installed in 1937 with the construction of the new Central Park Zoo during that time. And to aid in its overall storybook theming. The honey bear statue also has a twin of the dancing goat statue, but it is safe to say or assume that this honey bear statue is actually inspired by, of course, Goldilocks and the three bears. So we have yet another storybook reference right here in such a park. And let's go see the twin that's going to be the dancing goat statue, also made in 1937 when Central Park Zoo construction was happening, just helping with the overall storybook theming of Central Park Zoo itself. And we could also assume that this dancing goat statue was inspired by perhaps the Billy Goat's Gruff. Another fun fact is that the Honey Bear statue, the dancing goat statue, and Boto were all made by the same sculptor, which is gonna be called Frederick Roth, Frederick Roth is actually the most pronounced or prominent artist in Central Park, and he was responsible for these past three statues that we actually just saw. And with that, we are going to continue along our walk, walking down the promenade, looking at that beautiful fall foliage, all those different colors and trees. And we're going to be looking at the actual entrance for the Central Park Zoo, 
So essentially, this is the entrance where you would enter in the Central Park Zoo. And although it doesn't look that grand, it is still something that is very prominent in many different types of media, storybooks, movies, all these things, definitely. And although it's not the most decorative, decorative entrance, we do have these etchings on the buildings all around the Central Park Zoo's promenade, which actually feature many different animals. So the next time you're stopping around Central Park Zoo, make sure you keep an eye out for the etchings on all these different buildings. And how could I make a visit to the Central Park Zoo without, of course, saying hi to the nice seals? They decided to pop out on our walk today. They're gonna be on the right, probably looking and searching for some food. And you guys could definitely check out and view the Central Park Zoo's seal feedings without actually entering the Central Park Zoo. But you could check for the seal feeding times online, definitely. And right before we get to our last stop of the walk today, we have a seal telling us hello and saying hi to us, nicely perched on this walk. And again, Central Park Zoo is just a very notable place for lots of different types of media. All right, so we are at the site of our final stop, and that's going to be the Delacorte clock. Right now, we are looking at the back of the Delacorte clock, which was, of course, donated by George Delacorte himself as he also donated the Alice in Wonderland statue that we saw just a few moments ago. So this Delacorte clock, again, is gonna help solidify the overall storybook theming that the Central Park Zoo has. And this is the back of it. All right, now we're getting a good look at the front of the very iconic and notable Delacorte clock. So this mechanical clock features different statues of animals sculpted by Frederick Ross. So we've got a hippo, a goat, elephant, penguin, kangaroo, and a, bear, and a bear parading around the clock with a variety of instruments. This was made in 1937. And every half hour, the clock will chime with a different type of nursery rhyme. There are actually 30 different nursery rhymes that could be chimed any time on the half hour. And every single hour, you will see these statues, these bronze statues right here on the bottom. You'll see them move around as if they're parading. It is definitely a very neat and special sight to see these clocks chiming. So definitely the next time you are at Central Park, take a look and hopefully a listen to the Delacorte clock. We also have these bronze sculptures of the monkeys on top. And again, the Central Park Zoo has just been an inspiration for many different types of media, but my favorite type of media that always reminds me of the Central Park Zoo is gonna be Madagascar, the movie. So that's one of my favorite media references that I get from the Central Park Zoo. Right now, I'm gonna have somebody put a list of the books we actually saw today. And we are gonna look at our final book, our final story book, whose inspiration came from the Delacorte clock themselves. So this is gonna be a book called The Dancing Clock. It's by Steve Metzger. And a little synopsis of this book. From his home in the zoo, Milo the snow monkey watches the band too. His friends beg him to play, but all Milo wants to do is join the musicians and dance. Then one day he gets his big chance. The zookeeper forgets to lock Milo's gate and Milo sets off on an unforgettable adventure. So there are many different storybooks and types of media inspired by the Central Park Zoo, but I definitely wanted to shout out this very adorable and cute book. So we have a list of the books that were actually seen in the walk today. And I'm also gonna leave you with a gift, essentially gonna be a holiday gift guide, which features many of the books that were here today that you could actually purchase as the holidays are coming up very, very soon. 
So check in the chat for a little holiday gift guide of some of these books featured here today. And with that, of course, I would like to thank you all for participating and joining the Conservancy in yet another weekly walk. It is always nice to have you all. I just wanted to say, stay safe and be well. And of course, have a happy and safe Halloween season. Take care.